far right. Coach, uh, you mentioned your numerous early commitments, uh, and that's kind of seeming like a trend around the country. Are, are coaches kind of using that as a strategy to re like evaluate for the following year, or is that kind of a safety net maybe for players decommitting at the last second? Uh, rephrase that question. I didn't. I missed the first part of it. Well, the the numerous early commitments that, that you you have is that kind of a strategy that coaches around the country are using as kind of a safety net for players decommitting at the last second, or is that just a strategy you're using like going into recruiting as far as evaluating for the following year? Well, really, um, uh, I don't know if it's a strategy because it's just it's just the way it's happened. Now, when I came back um, uh, to, to, to Mississippi State, and I was one of those guys that didn't want to offer a scholarship until after you guys started playing the senior year. If you wait that long, you won't get any. And uh, I hope it doesn't get to be where we offer. I got a letter the other day from a kid in the ninth grade, and they wanted to know if we wanted to offer a scholarship. I sure hope it doesn't get to that point. Uh, but, uh, you know, you're at the point. Now, one of the things that's really helped us is uh, the stability of our coaching staff now. Uh, being able to know where guys are. Basically, in the fall, we'll be, rec we'll be evaluating talent not only for this year, our last few scholarships, but also for the next year. And knowing uh, you, we're almost two years ahead. And believe it or not, uh, last night I was working on a 2010 depth chart. That's how far you get ahead. So you'll know exactly you know, uh, who's leaving and how many scholarships you're going to be able to offer the next year because it does affect your decision. It's a lot like the NFL now. Uh, you know, like the NFL looks at guys' salary contracts and who's going to become free agent. We have to look at who's going to graduate, what positions are going to, uh, uh, where we're going to be deficient, how many guys can we uh, be able to sign. This year we're going to sign 25 guys. Uh, the next year we probably won't be able to sign but 16 or 17 guys. So we're really going to have to be uh, sharp on our evaluations to make sure all 16 of those scholarships count. And uh, it's just the trend right now, the, the way things are going. Here in the front, Carl. Yeah, I remember last year you said something to the effect that you'd be happy to give Glenn Dorsey a graduation gift and, and see him move on. Uh, I know you got a lot to do between now and the game against LSU, including your 2010 depth chart. But uh, when you look at what they've got coming back on the defensive line at LSU with Tyson Jackson and Ricky Jean Francois and those guys, do you almost think there hasn't there's not much of a drop off that you'd expect losing a guy like Dorsey? If anybody else had lost Dorsey in this conference, you'd, they'd be in real trouble. LSU just puts another one up there. And Tyson Jackson is really uh, uh, an outstanding player. Uh, but uh, I know that whoever he puts out there is going to be a great player, but I'm still glad Dorsey's gone. Uh, I, I tell people this all the time. Uh, in my coaching career, uh, he is one of only three defensive linemen that, uh, that when I went to the game, I was truly afraid of. And uh, Reggie White was, um, uh, was, was one of the others when I was in the NFL, and Howie Long was one of the others. To your left, second row. Hey, Coach, I, I think you're one of 11 coaches now in the league that's won a bowl game. There's five guys that won national titles. Could you just talk about what it's like coaching this league in the competitiveness level? Uh, our conference is... Uh, uh, is the toughest conference in the country. Uh, we've got more national championships and uh, we've got more players in the pros. Uh, so our talent level in this conference is the best in the country. The quality of our coaches is the best in the country. And if you're going to compete in this conference, uh, you know, you've got to prepare well and you've got to play well every week. And anybody in this conference can beat anybody uh, at any given time. And uh, it's an honor to, uh, uh, is an, I, I've always felt it when I was a player, and uh, I feel it even more so now as a coach. It's an honor to be a part of the Southeastern Conference. So you talked about high school, high school quarterbacks have, have run the spread, and it, and it now seems to be, to be seeping into college. Could, could you just talk about uh, the, the, the thinking behind that? Uh, would you ever do it and, uh, and, and defending it and the problems it caused? I would and uh, it's a part of who we are, a part of our mentality, and uh, we want to continue to stay in that direction. Uh, you know, we do use some spread sets. Uh, we do use a shotgun. Uh, but, uh, you know, to go to that full time, uh, I don't see us doing that. Um, 
defending the spread is just like uh, uh, defenses defending the wishbone. It all comes goals and cycles. Uh, you have to recruit a different kind of athlete to run the spread offense, and you've got to recruit a different type of athlete to defend the spread offense. You have to have speed in the secondary. You have to have speed at linebacker. Uh, the days of the 250, 260-pound middle linebackers, those days are over. The days of that 215 or 20-pound safety who runs a 4-7, those days are over. All four of those guys in the secondary have got to be able to cover, and you've got to have six defensive backs now that can line up and play uh, in a given game because you're going to see four wide receivers, and, uh, and you've got to be able to put six guys out there, corners, uh, that can cover. And, uh, and also be able to tackle. So, um, uh, you know, I think there's no question the defenses are going to catch up with it uh, because they always have and they always will in time. To your left near the back. Hey, Coach. Um, could, will there be any changes with a new defensive coordinator? Will there be any changes in philosophy? And also, could you talk about your decision to, to sort of promote from within rather than, than go look for somebody who had experience as a defensive coordinator? Uh, the first thing is um, uh, you know, there'll be minor changes because with any uh, every coach is going to be different. Uh, and, you know, anytime you get a different play caller, uh, a guy's going to have a different feel for the game. He's going to have different thoughts about the way to do things. Our overall philosophy will not change. Uh, you know, we want to be a physical defense. We want to be a defense that plays fast, and we want to be sound in the fundamentals, and we want to make sure that we don't give up explosive plays in the running game or the passing game. Uh, my decision to promote within, uh, basically, uh, I watched Charlie Harbs. First of all, I knew of his reputation before I hired him as, a, uh, as our safety coach. Uh, a strong reputation, probably as strong as any assistant coach that I was hearing about in the conference. In fact, I've been hearing about this guy for so long, I was saying, you know, surely nobody can be that good. Uh, but uh, uh, after we got him there and watching him work in our offense, uh, excuse me, in our defense uh, for a year, it was almost like an uh, interview for, uh, during, for a, a one-year interview. And, uh, and I decided I had no idea that we were going to be losing Ellis Johnson, but at uh, about midseason, uh, I had really decided that if we ever lost Ellis, that's the route that I was going to go on, based on, on what I was seeing in, the, in seeing him coach on the field uh, and prepare uh, in our coverages. And uh, I mean, you, you got to understand, you go back and look through our defense, uh, last year, we didn't give up any home runs uh, back in the secondary. And we played some of the better offenses in the country. Uh, the job that our defensive uh, uh, unit, uh, particularly on, on the back end and our coverages, what we did against Kentucky was outstanding because that was one of the most uh, prolific offenses in our conference uh, last year, one of the best in the country. And uh, they did a great job on the back end uh, in giving us a chance to, uh, to win that ball game. So uh, he basically had a, uh, uh, he was, without his knowledge of it, he was interviewing for the job because uh, I always, uh, if, if we have somebody on our staff who is fully capable of getting the job done, I always prefer to promote from within. Sylvester Kroom still at the podium from Hoover, Alabama. We're in to the first day of the 2008 SEC Media Day. We're coming back after the break. Everything you need to know about the Mississippi State Bulldogs because there's like room at SEC Media Day. To your right in the middle. 